Three major earthquakes, all within a single week. Coincidence or a warning from the sleeping giant beneath the Philippines? Four massive tectonic plates collide under this nation, their relentless collision storing energy along hidden trenches and cracks. But when the silence finally breaks, who gets caught in the crossfire, and could the next rupture be far bigger than anyone imagines? Beneath the Philippines, four massive tectonic plates, Eurasian, Philippine Sea, Pacific, and Sunda, move in a relentless contest of force. Each year, these plates grind past and beneath one another at rates between 3 and 10 centimeters. Over decades, those centimeters become meters, storing energy in the Earth's crust like a wound spring. Unlike most countries, which might straddle one or two plate boundaries, the Philippines sits at a unique crossroads. Here, the land is squeezed from all sides, with no true center of safety, only shifting zones of risk. The Philippine Sea Plate pushes northwest, colliding with the Eurasian Plate, while the Pacific Plate subducts from the east. To the south, the Sunda Plate presses upward. This four-way squeeze creates a complex web of faults and trenches, both offshore and on land. The result? A nation under constant strain, where stress never truly fades and the ground is always preparing for its next release. Every movement, even a few centimeters per year, matters. Over centuries, this slow-motion collision builds up enough energy to drive some of the world's most powerful earthquakes and tsunamis. The pressure doesn't just accumulate in obvious places, it spreads across hidden cracks and deep trenches, leaving no region untouched. In this environment, the concept of a safe zone becomes a myth. Even areas far from the coast or known fault lines can be vulnerable when the plates decide to move. 5 Wu LCS, the national agency tasked with monitoring these hazards, faces the challenge of mapping and preparing for threats that are both widespread and unpredictable. Their mandate is grounded in the science of plate tectonics, a constant reminder that the entire archipelago exists in a geologic crossfire. As the story turns to the specific offshore trenches and fault systems that channel this strain, the underlying reality remains. In the Philippines, the Earth is always in motion, and the next event is never a question of if, but when. Off the western coast of Luzon, the Manila Trench runs parallel to the shoreline, a deep scar in the seafloor, mostly silent for centuries. Scientists call it a sleeping giant, capable of generating earthquakes as large as magnitude 8.5. The last truly massive rupture here is lost to pre-colonial memory, but marine sediment cores and coral records point to ancient tsunamis that reshape the coast. If the trench were to rupture at full length, Tsunami models show waves could reach low-lying towns in Pangasinan and La Union in under 20 minutes. In some scenarios, the first surge arrives in as little as 2 to 7 minutes, outpacing any hope of mass evacuation by road. For communities like Dagopan and San Fernando, the only real protection is vertical escape. Climbing to the upper floors of sturdy buildings, a strategy that remains unevenly available along the coast. The risk is compounded by gaps in real-time seafloor data as FIVL CS and partner agencies struggle with access to offshore sensors near disputed maritime boundaries. This data blackout leaves tsunami warning models less precise, adding uncertainty to an already narrow window for survival. To the east, the Philippine Trench plunges more than 34,000 feet, one of the world's deepest subduction zones. Here, the Philippine Sea Plate dives beneath the archipelago, driving both frequent tremors and the potential for powerful, far-reaching earthquakes. Deformation data from ground sensors and satellites now show parts of this trench are locked, accumulating strain year by year. When rupture comes, it can send shockwaves across Samar, Leyte, and the Bicol region, sometimes triggering tsunamis that cross multiple island chains. The depth and length of the trench make it a persistent source of anxiety for coastal and inland communities alike. Along the southern edge of Mindanao, the Cotabato Trench stands as a grim reminder of what these offshore faults can unleash. In August 1976, a magnitude 7.9 earthquake struck beneath the Moro Gulf. Within minutes, a tsunami swept through towns like Labak and Kalamansig, killing more than 8,000 people and leaving entire barangays in ruins. Survivors remember the wave as the sea coming home, a story retold in schools and at fishing docks every June. Painted signs in local dialects trace evacuation paths, 
and annual drills draw on these memories, reinforcing a culture of vigilance that lives alongside the daily work of coastal life. The Manila, Philippine, and Cotabato trenches are just part of a horseshoe of subduction zones that surround the Philippines. Each trench channels the slow violence of plate motion into sudden, catastrophic release. For millions living along the coasts, these hidden front lines are a constant presence, shaping everything from disaster planning to the rhythms of ordinary days. Deep beneath Metro Manila, the West Valley Fault waits in silence. This 100-kilometer scar, mapped in high detail by PHIVOLCS using LIDAR and borehole data, cuts through the heart of the capital's most crowded districts. Quezon City, Marikina, Pasig, Taguig, and Muntinlupa all lie along its path. The fault crosses highways like C5 and SLEX, slices underwater mains, power substations, and even hospital grounds. A magnitude 7.2 earthquake here is not a distant scenario. It is the basis for government drills and engineering models. Shaking at this scale would snap bridges, topple older buildings, and rupture pipes that supply millions with water and electricity. Lifeline systems, transport, power, hospitals are all at risk of simultaneous failure. In a 2021 interview, Dr. Renato Salidum, PHIVOLCS director, recalled the aftermath of the 1990 Luzon quake. We learned that seconds of shaking can erase decades of infrastructure. Today's city is denser, taller, and more interconnected. Every new map, every drill, is a race against time to prepare for an event that history and science say is overdue. Microquakes have surged across the archipelago, with year-to-date counts in 2025 already double those of last year. Fivolk's analysts now track tremors in zones that, until recently, were blank spaces on seismic maps. In Samar and northern Luzon, sensors have picked up clusters of tiny shocks, some in areas with no previously mapped faults. More than 100 digital seismic stations, many linked to a new AI-assisted network, feed live data into PKIVOLCS headquarters. The system scans for patterns, sudden bursts of microquakes, or ground motion that shifts by more than 2 centimeters in just a few days. When the algorithm detects a spike, like six microquakes along the Manila Trench in under 36 hours, it issues a yellow alert. On June 9, 2025, just such a flag coincided with satellite radar showing 3.1 centimeters of sudden uplift near Bataan, followed by a moderate quake two days later. Not every yellow flag leads to a major event. About one in five proves a false alarm, sometimes triggered by heavy rains or unrelated ground movement. Still, 67% of these alerts in 2025 have matched up with real deformation on the ground. The 2019 Mindanao quake sequence remains a textbook case. A series of tremors, each one shifting stress to the next fault in line, tracked in real time by both sensors and satellites. For FIVLCS, these signals are not predictions. They are warnings that the system is restless and that locked segments may be closer to rupture than surface calm suggests. Earthquakes in the Philippines do not follow a single script. Each region faces a different combination of hazards shaped by the shifting ground beneath. Strong shaking is the most immediate threat, capable of toppling buildings, snapping bridges, and severing lifelines in seconds. In river valleys and reclaimed land, liquefaction can turn solid ground into a slurry, undermining houses and roads as soil loses its strength. Upland communities face landslides, especially after heavy rain or when quakes strike steep slopes, cutting off entire barangays from help. Along the coast, a major offshore rupture could send tsunami waves ashore in less than 20 minutes, with the fastest arrivals in northwestern Luzon and parts of Mindanao. Monitoring these risks now depends on more than just counting quakes. Ground sensors and satellites track centimeter scale shifts, uplift or subsidence that signal deep strain. GNSS and INSAR networks have flagged new deformation near Samar and northern Luzon, while deep earthquake swarms, clusters of tremors more than 15 kilometers down, have appeared in areas once thought stable. Silent gaps along known faults, where little activity is detected, may be the most dangerous of all. These are the segments that remain locked, 
quietly storing energy for the next major event. For scientists and communities alike, the checklist is clear. Watch for sudden ground motion, track deep quake clusters, and never mistake silence for safety. In the past year, microquakes in the Philippines have doubled, with new clusters appearing even in previously unmapped zones. The nation's position, trapped between the Eurasian, Philippine Sea, Pacific, and Sunda plates, guarantees constant seismic strain, from deep offshore trenches like the Manila and Cotabato to surface faults crossing cities. The West Valley Fault alone poses a magnitude 7.2 threat to Metro Manila, while the 1976 Cotabato tsunami killed over 8,000, a reminder of the stakes. Despite advances in ground sensors, satellite tracking, and early warning analytics, no system can yet predict exactly when or where the next major rupture will occur. Some segments remain ominously quiet, their true stress unknown. What is certain, the machine beneath the archipelago never stops. Each quake, small or large, is a signal, evidence of a restless landscape. For the Philippines, vigilance and preparedness are not options. They are necessities in a nation built upon shifting ground. 